This building was designed with a focus on preserving natural resources and using the environment for energy. So the building is 88% energy efficient, meaning it's not using carbon producing energy sources like natural gas or coal-fired plants. Uh, it's not burning something, it's using the natural environment. It's using the sun, it's using the wind, it's using the difference in heat and cool temperatures, the, the temperatures of night and day. Automatic shades regulate temperatures in the building, and a photovoltaic solar farm on South Campus generates electricity. The structure itself was built with recycled materials, like concrete made up of 40% fly ash. Fly ash is a waste product from coal-fired power plants, and uh, it's normally just thrown into landfills. We're using it as part of our concrete. It uh, saves uh, money. It also saves uh, that uh, offsets the cement use. So it, and then that was never done before. It's a very unique process that we created here that's now being used around other places in the country. Bowen says another aspect of sustainable buildings is the focus on human health and productivity. And we know that uh, buildings that have a lot of natural light, like this one with a lot of glass, people feel better, they're more productive in, there's studies to show that. We use materials that don't have volatile organic compounds in the building. The carpets, the paints, the materials, because that's what creates the sick building syndrome in buildings who don't use that. You have those, those gases that come into the air and you don't feel very good. These buildings don't have those materials. We choose to exclude those from there. And so people feel better and are more productive in these buildings. The first and second floors are occupied and Paul Kimes Anthrax Lab will be moved to the third floor this fall. The applied research and design tenants include the Center for Sustainable Environments, the National Park Service, and other groups with a focus on environmental research. There's a lot of collaboration between these groups that they're, they're sharing uses, they're sharing facilities. And if you know anything about research, is generally you find when you bring groups that have similar interests but maybe different topics, generally the end result is much more positive because people are sharing. And sometimes they even call that the water cooler effect. You meet in the hallway, you talk about an issue, you talk about a problem, next thing you know you have a creative solution. University planners say creative solutions in building design are a must in a world facing global climate change. This new NAU facility is a carbon neutral building where any emissions are offset by the reductions in CO2. Because the design and construction employed new ideas, the price tag was $25 million, about 10% higher than building an older style facility. Now you go, well, gee, uh, is that good public policy? Well, absolutely, because the energy savings and the uh, savings in uh, long-term operating, because it's built really strongly, long-term operating and maintenance costs will more than return that 10%. Uh, we're expecting our return on investment on that 10%, additional 10%, to be about five or six years. So it's, no, it's a pretty short time frame in the life of a 100-year building. Bowen says a building designed to help solve global warming is a good use of taxpayer dollars. And now that the building is occupied, progress is going to be monitored closely. I think a year from now we're really going to understand the energy savings that we have from this building. We'll have a year of hard data in terms of electricity that we used, how much uh, water that we've saved, uh, all the environmental things that, that we want this building to do. It always sounds good on paper, but I think you really have to have that trial test of a year's time. And in a year's time, we're going to have some real hard data as to how this building performed. Administrators are sharing information with groups interested in following NAU's lead and building green facilities. This facility pushes the envelope of what's possible in sustainable technologies, says Rich Bowen, who believes University President John Hager deserves a lot of recognition. He uh, really was part of the group that uh, helped put this together, this concept together. Uh, and then helped it um, uh, really move forward through a number of hurdles and obstacles to, uh, to get to this point. And so now, now we're here and uh, now we have a, a beautiful example of what sustainability can be like and uh, what a modern sustainable building can be. And so that's, uh, that's an exciting time, exciting place for us to be as a university.